Hey everybody. So I would like to introduce you to a little piece of software that I wrote. It's called Astro AF Diffraction Spikes. The impetus for this script was that in some cases I would like to have star spikes applied to my astrophotography images. And the reasoning was that I've received some feedback on some printed images that uh, customers had provided for me that they preferred the pointy spiky things on the images more than the tight round stars. And the reason being is that the tight round stars kind of print as little white blobs and they're uninteresting and having the spikes adds some depth and character to the printed image and I, I think it's preferable in a lot of cases. I don't really have an opinion on star spikes themselves other you know outside of, of printing. I like tight round stars with no diffraction spikes and I also like very much stars that, uh, that are also tight and round but do have diffraction spikes. Um, I think uh, both are appealing. You know, it's contingent upon what type of telescope that you're using. Again, I have a preference for being able to uh, print diffraction spikes. And so when I have astrophotography images that I've taken with my refractor telescope, then I would like to be able to add diffraction spikes to them. And so to that end, I wrote a piece of software because there was a Photoshop plugin that I would have liked to have had but it was for Windows only, and I'm on Mac. And there were a couple other applications that I found that do provide functionality or feature of star spikes, but those are full-blown image processing applications, and I don't need that. I already have Serial, which I use for image processing, and I just really wanted a lightweight script that would do this for me. And uh, as a result of not being able to find anything, I decided to go ahead and write one. And uh, now that I have it written, I've also made it available to you. It's uh, freely available on GitHub. It's open source. You can check it out. From uh, GitHub, you can download a zip file. You can clone it uh, using Git to your machine. It should work on Windows and Linux. I'm hoping to get some feedback from users on those platforms to let me know how it goes because I've only been able to test on Mac. But being that it's written in Python, it should be multi-platform. But again, it's untested. But if I get any feedback and I'm able to uh, uh, update the documentation for installation, um, I think that the application should run on those platforms without any problems. But we'll see. So anyway, in the next part of this video, I want to walk through and give you a, uh, a demo of the application. It won't be a long video. I'll just kind of walk you through it and show you what, uh, what Astro AF Diffraction Spikes does. Anyway, if you're interested in checking that out, stick around and we'll get into it. My name is Doug and this is Astro AF. So I'll start out here and we'll take a look at the GitHub page for it and I'll run you through that and then we'll go into the software and I'll do a quick demo for you. So over on the GitHub page, which is located at this address and I will put that down in the description, which is where you can actually get the code. Uh, when you come here, you can either check this out with Git um, through SSH or HTTPS, or you can download the zip file here and just put that and unarchive it onto your machine wherever you would like. This is the README, and it basically describes the, the software, which this script adds diffraction spikes to stars and astrophotography images. It only processes TIFF images, so you can input a TIFF image and it will output a TIFF image. And then there's a series of controls in the, in the UI where you can select and browse for your input image and your output image. And then there's a series of controls to configure parameters that are defined on the left. And there's a little icon here that you can hover over that will give you more information for each control. And then you'll set the parameters over in these slide controls on the right. And once you get your parameters selected, you'll click on the process and 
generate image button. And that will actually create this, the, the image with the star spikes in it. So when you first select your input image, the preview on the left will open up. And then you won't have a preview image on the right until you actually click on the process button. And then that will populate. Now, it's not quite big enough to see the details, so I've made it so that you can click on the output image, and that'll open a larger image, which I'll show you. I am accepting donations. Um, if you'd like to support the development and maintenance of this project, uh, certainly please uh, visit Buy Me a Coffee. You can subscribe or become a member there, and I have some other perks and things uh, related to that uh, all around astrophotography. So installation requirements, as I mentioned, I've only tested this on Mac, but it should run on any platform that can run Python. Um, it does require the tkinter library in Python. So if you're using Mac with Homebrew, you'd install the python-tk package. For Windows and other platforms, I've provided some links here. And I'm hoping that if anybody tests this out, on uh, Windows or other platforms that they might send me some notes on the installation process for them so that I can update this README with better information for those platforms on how to install. But really all you have to do is download and unpack the zip file wherever you want on your machine and then you run the script from that uh, current working directory uh, wherever you unpack that to and the command for that is here. And so you simply run that Python script, and then you go through the process. And I have this listed here, so as far as for usage, and this is the steps to actually go through and conf uh, load up your images and, uh, and configure the parameters. I will say that the configuration can take a lot of trial and error. Every astrophotography image is different. There's lots of varying different sizes of stars in the star field, and the, uh, large stars or very bright stars versus, uh, you know, dimmer or smaller, whatever the case may be. And um, the software does pretty good. I think when there's a big difference from very large stars in the same frame as very small stars, then it becomes more challenging to find a happy medium and balance in applying the diffraction spikes. So I think there's some challenges there on getting what you'd like out of it. When there's some consistency across the star field, it works pretty easily. It's not bad. It's just a, a matter of, of moving sliders and generating preview images, uh, which you can do over and over again until you get the image that you want. It, it works very quickly um, when it processes the image. It's just almost immediate. Um, so you don't have to wait a long time for the processing. You can, you can make a change, generate a preview, take a look at it, and, uh, and then modify it as you need until you kind of get to the place that uh, uh, you're, you're wanting to get with the uh, diffraction spikes. So with that said, let's go over into the software and I'll do a demo of it for you. So here in the software, we're looking at the readme file that's in the software right now. And that's contained when you download the application, you'll get the readme locally so that you can preview it. Um, if you have, a, it's a, a markdown file, you can, preview that in a browser, or if you have a, um, a markdown uh, reader, then you can see it formatted like this. Otherwise, you'll see it more as code. I'm in the current working directory, and I just need to issue the command. And in this case, it's, it's Python 3 um, is the name of my Python installation. Uh, and the name of the file to launch is af underscore diffraction underscore spikes underscore gui dot pi. Okay, so that's what I am issuing here, that command to launch the program. And I'll just hit enter. So the application comes up. And just as we saw in the, um, in the readme file for the preview, so the first thing we want to do is select our input TIFF image. And if we hover over these little information icons, we can get tooltips that kind of tell us what each step does. So on this one, we're going to select the input image for processing. So I'll just click the Browse button, and I'll select an image that I have here and open it. I like this one. It's a trio of NGC 7635, NGC 7538, I think, and uh, M52. 
and it's got a really nice star field with a lot of opportunity to uh, apply star spikes at different levels. So it's, it's been a fun image to work with. Now on the output file, we can hover over here and this is, we're going to select or provide a name for the process output image. So we can browse to our location and just type in a name and I'll call this um, output process stars. And I'll just put that in the same location. You can save this to any location that you wish. And then I'm going to go ahead and set some parameters. And uh, what I found is that, um, so we want to set the minimum threshold. And so this sets the, the lower limit for pixel intensity. So this is based and detects stars based on the intensity of, of the light that's in a pixel. Intensity values that are below the threshold that I set here will be considered to be background. So I can control what gets star diffraction spikes applied to it by adjusting this lower limit. So the minimum threshold. And what I found when I have large and small, and in this particular image, this area here is going to have some candidates that are probably going to want to have um, large spikes applied. And there's also uh, possibly here and down in this bottom area. And, uh, and so I'm going to set this pretty high at about 225. And then the maximum threshold, it goes up to 255. And I'm going to set this at about 236. So I've got a maximum threshold that's just a little bit higher than my minimum. It doesn't always have to be higher. You can set it lower. You can play with this, uh, with these thresholds however you want. The star spike link multiplier, this controls how long your star spikes are going to be and how far they extend out from the star. And you can adjust the length with this. And what I found is have been tending to like somewhere around 0.8 up to a little over point, uh, 1, maybe 1 1.2 at the most. Somewhere like there, but we can play with it. I'll go a little higher so we can make sure we see them. Because if you get them too short, they won't extend outside the boundary of, of, the, of the starlight itself. Then we also have a thickness multiplier. So this is the thickness of the diffraction spike. And I find that this, leaving it at 0 or 0 0.01 is pretty much my preference. Any larger than that, it, it kind of gets overboard. You can certainly use it for that if you want to do something artistic and, and uh, really push the star spikes, uh, then that's available to do that. Uh, we have the, the blur kernel size. So this sets the size of the blur that's applied to the star spike. On this one, I have kind of settled in around a value of 9 here, somewhere between 9 and 11. And obviously, if you want more blur, then, then increase this. And if you want less, then decrease this. Uh, this is a blur multiplier. This is actually applied and was my attempt to try to find some balance between really uh, large bright stars and smaller stars that are still bright. Because the thing is, is that the pixel intensity for a small star can be the same pixel intensity for a large star. So reading the brightness of these um, doesn't really help us so much. So this uh, blur multiplier is an effort to try to find some balance with the large and the small stars. And I have found that around a 0.6 value works for me here. And obviously, any, you know, your mileage may vary on these parameters. This is uh, just what I have been working with and, and kind of what I like and, uh, and for this image. And for a different image, these values may be completely different, And uh, just so you know. And then uh, another thing is, is based on your uh, the, your framing and how you have the actual deep sky object, the star field uh, aligned in your frame, maybe at an angle, and uh, which it is in this case. And I would like for my spikes to be aligned to this. And so I added a rotation control and this allows you to adjust the angle of rotation. And in here, uh, this ends up being around 21 degrees rotation, which I'll set 
So at that point, I've got this configured, and I just need to process and generate an image. And it's that fast. So we have an image here with star spikes applied. Now it's pretty small, and uh, so what I've made is uh, you can click on your output preview image to open a larger image. And then, obviously, we can kind of come in. So I've got some spikes here that I want to work with and maybe get smaller. Um, some of them I really like. It just depends what you want to do with the printed image. You know, and then some on these smaller stars, um, the spikes, you know, notice that the spike length is based on the size of the, the stars. And uh, so you'll have larger spikes on uh, larger star areas and smaller spikes on smaller star areas. And then they'll be spread out through. And if, the, if they're too small, like these stars here, they won't, and not bright enough, then they, they won't get spikes applied at all, but these brighter ones do. So we could take a look and see what can we do about reducing this area here. Well, what I can do is I can increase that minimum. So let's bring that up to about 230, 233. Let's see what that does for us. And so now I can look at the preview and go in. So I got rid of some. So let's let's make an adjustment and see how it goes. So I'll raise this up to 244 and I'll raise this one. Oh, we can leave it down. And let's see what that does. So now we've got one bright star with uh, with a diffraction spike applied to it here. And if we go through, we have diffraction spikes down below, but we've lost a lot of the uh, diffraction spikes in the background. So this is the balancing act. So we could maybe try to bring this down and see what we get. But also notice how fast this is. I mean, it's easy to just make changes and see how they work out. Maybe I'll lower this back down a little bit and process. So I got these back. So what I'll need to do, you know, is decide if I like that, um, or if I want to make a trade-off between the larger stars and the smaller stars, and uh, just try to find that balance on them. So, but anyway, that's that's kind of a working demo of what this does, and I'm pretty happy with it. Again, it is totally contingent upon the image that you're wanting to apply the diffraction spikes to, and you know the different uh, types of star fields and, and varying stars. The configuration that you make is a lot of trial and error to try and find a balance of what you like. Anyway, I present to you the diffraction spikes, and I hope you'll check it out. And hopefully you'll have good luck with it. You know, maybe it doesn't work for all images that you'd like to do, but I, uh, hopefully it might work for some of them. If you have feedback, I'd love to hear it. Anyway, I hope you enjoy it. And links are down in the description. It's easy to install, and please reach out with any questions you might have. So thank you very much. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if I've earned your subscription, I would it would be amazing if you click on that subscribe button. My name is Doug, and this is Astro AF.